Y'all, another day, another question. Let's talk about this question. So I got the question. And this question really revealed something super interesting to me. And I'm going to tell you what it is. Hello, really enjoying your content. Thanks, boo. For the extra savings allocation, do you put it in a high yield savings account or do you invest it? I'm asking because you mentioned that you already have a substantial savings and I think I oversave. So my goal is to push more to investments over savers unite y'all there are some people who did not get that video the shorts that i have out there talking about i'm an over saver there's some people who just don't get it but if you know you know you know over savers unite 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 y'all it's a thing it's a thing to the untrained ear people feel like there's not a such thing as over saving but for us living the life there really is and to the untrained ear you probably think you know the answer to that question right we put it in a high yield savings account, don't we? And then we put some money in our investment account, don't we? But honestly, when I actually started analyzing this question, the truth is a little more nuanced than what meets the eye. Let's talk about it. Okay, so this is what we know. In order to figure out how much you should save, how much should you have in a high yield savings account? Because yes, babies, all savings should be in a high yield savings account. The only thing that it's gonna do is inconvenience, inconvenience you in a matter of a few days to actually get the money. So if I need my money today, I'm not getting it today. Sorry. Remember now, a savings account for you to get your money today anyway. You're going to need at least, I'm going to say at most three business days, at most three business days to get your money. And all it is is a transfer, a transfer from one account to another account. So all your savings should be in a high yield savings account. Why not? It's going to make money that way. Make your money. But what you need to know is if push came to shove, what are your monthly living expenses? And I say push come to shove because there's some things that we can actually cut out, right? If push came to shove. But what are the things that you want to keep? In your monthly living expenses. So this is going to be for me. It's going to be my mortgage. It's going to be my utilities. It's going to be my cell phone. It's going to be my insurances. Hold on, I wrote it down. It's going to be food. It's going to be miscellaneous. And miscellaneous is those things like maybe the house needs something. Or maybe um, I need a new pair of shoes because I got a hole in the bottom of my shoe. Something. It's going to be, so I gave myself miscellaneous. It's going to be, that's about it, right? More or less. But I'm going to tell you what it's not going to be. Right now I have a housekeeper. We're going to cut that out. If push came to shove, I'm cleaning my own house because I'm at home anyway. Push come to shove means I don't have a job. I'm not bringing in income. So we're going to cut that out. Um, but we will keep we will keep our um, Netflix. What's that thing I got? Paramount Plus and YouTube Premium. That's $35 a month. So we're going to keep that. So you think about what are the things that you're going to keep if push came to shove and what are the things that you can do without? How much does that come up to a month? For me, that came up to, it came up a little under 3000 a month. And I just rounded it up to 3000 It came to like maybe 2800 And that is even with my miscellaneous and me giving myself like a nice big cushion for food, all of that. So I came up with 3000 a month. Then the second thing you're going to do is decide how many months of that do you need. Typically, how long do you think it will take you to find another job, right? For most people, maybe three months, maybe three months. Maybe you don't need the job to, that is like the job you have, but maybe you just find something in the meantime. Or maybe you want to find something like the job you have, and maybe it might take a little longer to do that. Maybe it's going to take six months. So only you can answer that question. So for me, I started out with three months. And then once I reached my three-month goal, I came up with six months. Then I moved to a year. So for me, a year is $36,000, right? $36,000 a year is what I should have. One year, that's really all you need. One year of savings of your living expenses. Because this is a push came to shove. You're going to get another job. You're going to bring an in income elsewhere. So one year, $36,000. Now let me tell you. 
when I looked at this, because mind you, I figured out what I needed for a year, a la 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 long time ago. But what do we oversavers do? Even when we reach that goal, we continue to save. Y'all, I haven't really faced these numbers since I figured it out. And it's like, okay, I have my one year. And y'all know every time I come up here and I talk about this on the video, I say, I don't have to save money anymore. I don't have to aggressively save because I already have over a year of living expenses saved up. That's what I always say. But every single month, I still add a little something, something, something to the pot of my savings funds. Guys. When I did the math, guess what I figured out? Guess what I found out? Guess what I realized about myself? I have over five years of living expenses saved up in a savings account. Over five years. And you know, I think we need a group. I think we need Over Savers Anonymous. Because when I realized that, I said, honey, child, you don't have to put another dime. Literally into the savings account. You can just put money into your investment accounts, period. The oversaver in me doesn't feel comfortable with that. The oversaver in me wants to always save something just in case. And, and it's not even just in case of an emergency. I don't even care about emergencies. For me, it's like, what if I want to, I don't know, <laughs> go buy something extravagant. What if I want to go take a vacation? Which I do. I already do all of these things, right? So none of it makes sense. It doesn't even have good logic, good rhyme, good reason. None of it makes sense. Because clearly I already take vacations that I cash flow within the month that I take them. Clearly I already do all of the things. But something in my brain says, but what if something else comes up and you want to go ahead and buy it? This is definitely a trauma response to growing up with so much lack and doing without so much that the only thing that could save you was having money, more money, and more money, and more money just in case. And I realize I'm still doing that. And I didn't even realize that because I always say, I just say the words. I already have over a year's ex of living expenses saved up. I didn't realize I had over five years of living expenses saved up. Didn't even realize that. Um, and so what this means for me is that I was getting ready to start working on phase two of my retirement plan, getting ready for retirement plan. Phase two is the phase where we actually save up a nice nest egg just in case when we retire, just in case the market is back down. Because the key to retiring is when you pull your money from the market to live off of, ideally, you're pulling that money during a market that's thriving, right? You don't want to lose money. So if the market is down, this means I'm now pulling money. That means that that money doesn't, can't even recover because I pulled it. So what do a lot of people do during that time? They actually live off of money that they have in a savings account, like a high yield savings account. Or they may have some other accounts like CDs, things like that. But usually something that you can get to immediately, right? Um... That's earning some interest, but not as much interest as the market. So that was going to be my next phase where I was going like, okay, now we're going to start saving up to have this nest egg so that we actually have the money to live from before we reach retirement age. So we can't touch the 401ks and the IRAs, but we can touch what we have in our brokerage account. We can touch what we have um, in the IRA that hasn't, we're not living off of our gains. We can actually pull money from our IRA that we put into the IRA because it's after tax money. But you will take a penalty if you stop pulling the money that you've made, your, your profit, okay? So that's a whole nother video. Um, but yeah, but when I look at this, it's like, honey girl, you're kind of already there too because technically... Nobody expects the market to be down five for five years. The market has always recovered within less time than that on average. So you don't even need five years of living expenses for a down market. 
I do have to do some research to find out how much should your living expenses be for a down market, that sort of thing, what the recommendation is. But like I said, thank you to you, Jan the best, for your question because this made me stop and think and reflect and look at what I'm doing. We're making progress. We are spending more money. We are treating ourselves. We are doing better with that. But like I said, it's like, oh, girl, did you realize that you should not even put another dime into savings? Everything from this day forward, all the excess, all the extra should ideally be going into your investment accounts. So that's my answer to you. Figure out how much you need for living expenses for one month. Figure out how many months makes you comfortable. And then from there, everything else goes into your investment accounts. There, Tanisha, everything else goes into your investment accounts. It's going to, it's going to be, we're going to, we're going to see what happens. I'll, t I'll keep y'all updated on what happens. Going to work on it. All right, y'all. Woo. Peace. Peace. <laughs>